of a full spectrum idea of how the plant can work with us and how we can work with it. And with uh, something over the remedy deck, it's twofold. So I kind of started off in that vibrational space, came down into sort of the physical realm. For a long time, I was doing supper clubs and uh, mixology and very much in that space you know I was telling stories with food always aligning with the with the plant planets the plants and I feel like now I've kind of come back again and I'm working with the plants in a much more vibrational space and there the information I'm getting from them is that they're also really excited to work in more of a quantum field and to to assist in immediate sort of quantum healing with people so this is twofold so on one hand there's the 52 uh, cards which are separated into earth, air, fire and water and so you can look at this sort of dynamic and how you feeling into how there might be an imbalance in those elements and then work with the remedies and the plants accordingly so there are I think he's trapped you can, you can come <laughs> through it's okay <laughs> sorry um, so on one hand we can make remedies and you know very basically when we know how to identify the plant and we know that it's not going to poison us we can make a very simple traditional tincture where you would uh, submerge the plant material in alcohol and then this either i like to work with this from this the new moon to the full moon or for a philosophical month which is 40 days and that kind of depends on the the plant it depends on how delicate it is how robust it is um so that's one of the most traditional uh, remedies that you can make and you can also add honey and vinegar and there's different variations of a tincture which depending on how long it's going to uh last for and how its potency uh and another method is to make an essence so if you follow like the bark remedy we are probably all familiar with those essences it's quite a kind of stringent system so you have to first of all you cut the plant and then it has to be in sunlight and with not falling into shadow and if it falls into shadow for even for a nanosecond you have to just start again and also keeping oneself out of it so even your shadow but the reality when you start working at those kind of subtle levels with the plant is that you don't need to go to that space um, you and I was really fortunate to have teachers who showed me this so you can very simply take a bottle of water ideally in a glass bottle and take the water with you and then find the plant and often I find that I will go out into nature thinking that I want to I need a certain plant I want to work with this plant for this reason and often it is it's not there and instead I've been guided to another plant that's in abundance and I go with that understanding and make the remedy and then later find out that the plants knew better than I did because when I figure out why that plant was showing me, it was a much better remedy than what I sort of thought in my head. So you can sit down with the plant and enter into a dialogue, first of all by rhythmic breathing. You can start with plant gazing, so you're literally gazing at the, the plant in a soft focus and just breathing in and that sort of exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide and then that opens up from the heart space opening up this uh five sort of feedback loop between the plant and your energy and to getting into a place where you can get like a full bodied yes or a full bodied no and explaining to the plant and allowing the plant to sort of you know, explain to you what it is that you need from this from this interaction and what you'd like to do so you ask permission if you would like to uh, create the essence and it's an exchange between the plant and the water and it can be instantaneous and it can take it to take some time and you're just there holding space for this exchange to happen uh, and there's there is something that you can witness that's a little bit like it just sort of comes alive it's like it the water actually sparkles but you can feel it energetically you can feel when that that exchange has happened so and then when you return you can 
that vibration when the water will hold for, for a short amount of time but to make an essence you would then 50 50 alcohol and traditionally that would be brandy but it could also be vodka so those are two very simple remedies that you can make and of course there are teas and uh, preparations with um, generally for a tincture it would either be vinegar hun uh, vinegar and honey which is knock smell uh, a alcohol um, or we would make teas and then there's more complex remedies so I've tried to make this quite a broad spread so we go from more traditional herbal remedies to more alchemical preparations like a spagyric so a spagyric the primary difference is with a herbal remedy you will remove the plant and you'll sieve it out and you'll just have the alcohol you'll just have the remedy left Whereas with a, a spagyric, you will burn, take the plant matter that you would otherwise dispose of and compost and burn it into ashes, into a very fine process of, of uh, distillation. And you, so you've got a whole plant remedy and they're very, spagyrics are very, very potent and you'd only need a very little. So there's a sort of array of different remedies that you can make on a physical level. But on the vibrational level, and what I've, really begun to work with this deck more and more in is as an oracle deck and allowing the plants to bring that information in in for us so for example I mentioned that they're in the elements of four elements and from that you also have the sulfur the mercury and the salt so that's how I would do an alchemical spread so the sulfur is like the soul of the situation the mercury will be the spirit, but also the mediating force. And then the salt will be the kind of action or manifestation. So I pull the spread for, for us all for today and uh, for the collective. And the first was St. John's Wort, which for me, I mean, you're probably familiar with St. John's Wort in terms of its uh, uses for depression, um, is one of the ones that's most highlighted, particularly because of the contraindications with with it and other medications, which is because it's such a good liver tonic, it pushes uh, drugs through quicker through your system. But it's also interesting that we're coming up to the solstice, and this is a remedy that is traditionally uh, created at noon on the summer solstice, and it's like sunshine in a in a bottle. So you don't have to make a remedy for the forty days in sunlight, and it turns like a bright red. And it's a great wound herb, it's very good for the skin. And energetically, it will just a little tiny dab and it just brings that sunshine back to you. So the fact that, and I've had other herbalists also talk about it being a winter solstice remedy because this is actually the time when we really need that sunshine. And as we're going, and also to welcome in the light, we're going into that part where we're coming to the shortest, darkest day and then we'll, we'll embrace the light as it comes. So St. John's Wort, for me is that the soul of it is that finding that joy finding that inner light is what we're being called to at this moment and then the action so douglas fir which isn't the fir it's pine uh is a great remedy for uh the immune system it's great for winter colds it's also because it's evergreen it's that continuing to thrive in the darkness and when things are i think both of these plants particularly the way that the situation is with the with the world at the moment and we're in this the, the winter it's giving us that that life that support to to be evergreen within our souls within each other and the last part is the, the burdock and for me energetically that's about letting go it's about any kind of clinging in terms of relationships often when things can be uh, kind of parasitic energies around us and we need to let these go and also for, for releasing all the toxins so that's also we're in that time of year when we're going into a very indulgent phase so so part of that distillation of the previous two is to uh, allow things to move through us and allow things to be let go of and not to hold on uh, so they can be used they can be used in both of these uh, uh, ways and I think one of the things I'd like to do and also there's, there's time for questions is to, to take you through a 
visualization on becoming plants and how once we're from that space that we can really call in the, the guidance from the plants. Because they are very, very keen to, and they're always talking and they're very, very keen to support us and be part of the conversation, but a lot of the time we're just not really listening. And one of the uh, one of the things I love about Monica Gagliano, who is a plant neurobiologist, and she's done a lot of incredible work around plant sentience, uh, also Stefano Mancuso, they coined the term plant neurobiology, but they talk about how plants can see, hear, taste, touch, they can have memory, they can have problem, uh, problem solved. So she said that the plants gifted her a word, and the word is oringum, and it means thank you for listening. And that just keeps on coming through, is that really is all that they, they want us to do, is just get good at listening. So if you're happy to do a little visualization. Um, yes. So I ask everyone to close their eyes. Breathe into your body. and drop into the darkness that lies behind your eyes. Here is a still point in the chaos, a refuge, and it is never not there. It is the cosmic void within, where everything arises and passes into existence. Dissolve into this pregnant nothingness, allowing the spaces between places within spaces of your cells to expand, infuse, diffuse. Particles become waves, fixed points of time unlock and collapse into this prima materia, the formlessness. From this stillness, we draw our first cosmic breath, inhaling all potentialities. As we release with the exhale, a primordial sound, a celestial monochord, radiates out from our formless bodies to entangle with the stars. We spiral through constellations as dusty skirts of planets spin at the edge of the horizon like whirling dervishes, leaving us spinning in their wake. We pass through the heart of the sun and Venus kisses our cheek as the moon lulls and laps lunations and we feel the gravitational pull of our planet calling to us. Waves become particles, become waves. As packets of light and sound, we enter into Earth's atmosphere. And we are received into the leaves of the plant. We transpire, respire, transform, held in the velvet bosom of a bloom to pollinate and procreate and encapsulate into a seed. And the wind hears our call, delivering us to our destination, nesting us into the cool, dark, damp soil. And we lie and we wait, held in the cosmic womb. And from this pregnant darkness, we begin to swell and yearn for the touch of the sun. Mycelium navigate our ascent. Planetary forces pull at our stalk as we rise up. Unfurling our leaves to meet the light that we once were. And we awaken, becoming plant. Keeping your eyes closed, feel into your essence. 
as you embody your plant. What colours, patterns and forms appear? Do you flower? Do you bear fruit? Perhaps you feel your roots reaching into the earth. What is your texture, your aroma? What movements want to express themselves? Perhaps you want to move your branches or stand tall in your trunk. Thoughts, images, sensations might float into your awareness. You may feel nothing and that's also information. Where does that nothingness originate from? Can you locate it? What is your medicine? What is your wisdom? What is your voice? And from this space of being plant, we ask the question, what future will we dream when we dream with plants? What future will we dream when we dream with plants? And in response, allow one word to arise from this space. Now you may bring forward any other situation, question, issue in your life at the moment that you would like guidance from the plant. Offer up its feeling and see how it feels to you as your plant. is to uh, continue your evening with your plant, as your plant, bring it with you into the conversations that you have, bring it with you on the seat next to you as you go home, and allow it to infuse and inform the way of your being. And uh, when you're ready, have a little stretch and have a look in your envelope and see you meet your plant, your plant ally. And there's no randomness as to why you've received this plant this evening. So feel into what it looks like, what its properties are, what messages it might have for you, and they might begin to unfold over the evening in, in come into your dreams. Pay attention to your dreams tonight. Mm. 
Would anyone like to share their word that came up? How are you? You go first? You go first? Power to manifest. Power, Power to, to manifest. manifest. Great. Yeah. What was your plan? Lavender. I'm going with me, yeah. Mm. Definitely. For the moment, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what I got was that embody all your qualities and nutrients and grow. Mm. Yeah. I got a sign, which is very interesting mm -hmm. because um, I love sign, actually. Mm. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the, this, that's it. They you find these plants are, are with you for a long time. And they'll come and go, but you often have a bit like the the planetary relationships that we have. You know, we the trans we have our fixed planets that we come into this life with in constellations. But then, as the, the planets transit through the zodiac, we get it influenced by different planets and similarly with the plants. Anyone else? Uh, community mm -hmm. and uh, uh, country, which mm. I really like because uh, I have an allotment and uh, a lot of them say, oh, the soil seeds, it's not growing everywhere, but the bees love the country. Mm. The country is really good for the soil because it brings up, it's a deep rooted plant, so it brings up nutrients from the lower to the upper to feed other plants. Mm. And um, I think it's just a very happy plant. Every mm. time I walk by, there's always something enjoying being in company. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, I like that, the idea of yeah, the relationship with the, with the bees and community, but also the the common name knit bone for comfrey is like a, that kind of knitting together and fusing of people in a community and yeah, like glue that holds it together. I, I kind of felt it. I mean, initially I saw, uh, so the comfrey flowers, uh, they're kind of like, uh, they're long, mm -hmm. but they, they droop. But when I first saw, what I saw was like, but it was upside down, mm. I was pointing up. I was like, I don't really know if Because like, you're looking at it, because you're the, cause you are comfy, you're looking at it from the other way. Oh, right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden there was an oak tree that just went, oh, okay, I'm here. But the feeling that of the oak tree was that it was holding a lot of different other species. Like mm. all the, I think the oak is many, one of the most, um, it's the tree which has the most species that inhabit it. Yeah, it's like 300 species yeah, I can hold. it's like sanctuary. And so from that, I thought, well, actually, it translates it to holding space. And yeah. So I'm a Gemini as well. Mm. So Comfrey has that kind of, you know, it's not so serious as well. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Great. Anyone else? Yeah. yeah. So, in my visual text, I saw two trees. One of them was a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. And the other one was a popular tree. Uh, in association with the Christmas tree, I got the word recipe and with a popular dream and wind. Mm. And these are two trees that I love, so it's no wonder. And then this was very interesting the card that I pulled. I'm mm. Greek and I got Achillea. Yeah, it takes its name after Achilles. And mm. I absolutely love this plant, so there you go. It's also it's such a strong visionary plant as well, yeah. and it's really good for. For when we're, we're very psychic, as you are, that it's very good at protecting that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Great. Anyone else? Any question? Any general questions? Um, the person I had is just out of interest. Um, do you have like a strong Aquarius or Uranian in the chart? Uh, yeah, I've got. Uranus in my 10th house and then um, my descendant is Aquarius but in Vedic astrology uh, my moon would be in Aquarius okay this is interesting because I, I guess we all come to different follow different paths to come to similar kind of points and um, you know I believe everything is vibration and moving into uh, Pluto moving into Aquarius and the great conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter moving into Aquarius as well we're moving into this period of actually healing, and we'll be, and the umbrella term is alternative healing, but I actually feel it's vibrational, mm. uh, which is very much Iranian. Mm. So, um, from an astrological point of view, 
I can understand how we're shifting into that, into that area. Uh, but I mean, in terms of the kind of, um, you know, associating plants, it's only recently that I came across articles about homeopathy, mm. which is looking at quantum uh, kind of fields and looking at plants and which blew my mind in that respect. But I always felt this kind of connection with, with plants and this kind of growing connection. How was it for you? Was it just a, just an awareness that came to you or was mm. it something that you found through a conversation? Um, how did it? Uh, I mean the plants I was always very strongly connected when I was a child and I kind of lost that a bit as I sort of was just in my teenage and early 20s and then kind of when I came back to it through homeopathy and with homeopathy I, I would always I was just like why are we taking why are we taking the pills like why don't we just you know go straight to the plant and like call on the plant so you know I started to if I fell and you know I'd just call on Arnica you know and I'd ask because you know as a homeopath there are various ways that you could do that you would write the potency and the name on, and charge upon the water or you can write it on yourself you can imprint it so I kind of was straight I got the kind of vibrational part and I kind of wanted to just go straight to it and then that's how the plants started to communicate more directly and in terms of that futuristic Uranian Aquarian energy like the plants are they're very in, they're very excited by tech actually and they're very excited by things being new and different so I'm kind of, I've, a few other plant spirit people that I've spoken to are also getting that same message, that one, the plants want to work on this very quantum immediate level and provide healing, um, yeah, like what we were just doing. I can, you don't have to necessarily be there, take a remedy. And then there's a third piece, which we don't really know what it is going to be yet, but everyone sort of, we're, a few of us are in agreement that the plants, because they're getting excited about technology, that there's something that's coming and we're not quite sure what it is yet, but plants they're in on it <laughs> that makes sense interesting because um i saw this uh article on twitter where there were scientists were experimenting using uh mycelium or fungi as uh conductors on between chips mm -hmm. on a board uh you know and i think the caption was like oh god AI is, AI is using nature now we're all doomed etc but i think it's a very fascinating conversation the fusion between what we consider to be man-made um and um you know, that nature and that symbiosis mm. and how that develops. Because um, you're also into AR or VR? Yeah, so I, I record the frequencies of the plants and and I think that there is a space for AI in terms of bridging the gap between human intelligence and more than human intelligence. And also if we're, if it's just us feeding the monster. I mean, I just came back from COP, the climate conference, and the, there wasn't really, nature didn't really have a seat at the table, which I found very odd. Like we were there to talk about nature and talk about climate, but uh, nature didn't have a real have a space. Even the even the term nature is problematic because it makes it the other and something outside of us. Um, but you know, and there are people who are beginning to legally put nature on their board and you know give personhood to uh, to lakes and to mountains and so on. But none of that. There's no point in any of that unless we're going to listen. So I do feel like there is something, there's a piece coming where we're going to be able to more effectively uh, listen and there may, might be a role of technology within that. When the, I love being close to nature and I go to the park if I can every single day and I always hug a tree mm. or a few trees. And what I realise is that the trees, I mean, it's the, it's the strength, the, the knowledge, you know, they've got. Um, I speak to them, you know, mm. in a, a energetically wise, you know, and sometimes maybe, you know, uh, with words. Mm. But also what they discovered uh, lately is like uh, they come uh, up as uh, channels mm -hmm. to communicate with the spirit world. Yeah. You know, and that has happened to me. You know, it, it's been happening to me lately, really. Mm. Um, so, yeah. And with the spirit and the cosmos, it's like there is... Uh, the cosmos, yeah. sorry. I'm yeah. um, sorry, go on. No, you, you go. What are you doing? Well, I was just saying that, yeah, it is that connection with the with the cosmos. There is that, um, I feel that they they are alchemists. They are yeah. really kind of yeah. integrating that and being facilitating with that. Because I'll tell you one thing, uh, what happened was uh, uh, there's this particular tree that when I hug, uh, I communicate with my dad, who is in the spirit world. Mm. Uh, when I had this tree, it's like a, he, I always get the same message about something about my life. 
and you know sometimes I thought is this my wishful thinking is it something that I'm making it up uh, you know and then lo and behold uh, the other day when I went to the spiritual church this medium came who I never met before and said to me I've got your dad here and your dad is passing on this message and I thought my god that's exactly mm. the message it was exactly the same message as I get when I had the tree um, and I kind of a link with my dad mm -hmm. you know so that was kind of a for me a fantastic confirmation that uh, I wasn't making it up mm -hmm. that really happens yeah, you know? yeah. so they can kind of act as uh, the trees can act as a uh, channels mm -hmm. of flowers so you know, my experience has been as a tree but, mm -hmm. yeah. you can always if you if you feel uncertain sometimes then you can always ask questions that you know the answer to or, or you know get that full body yes feeling from the from the plant and repeat the question so you can say you know is this what you, you what you mean yeah. and then you'll get that yes or if it doesn't feel right then you know you go back again and you try and refine it yeah it's always been the same kind of uh, you know message mm. really so, yeah. right, that's great so it's one of the questions. Is the alchemy cards um, give you messages of how to um, get in touch with the frequencies of the plants? You were mentioning something about the remedies because I'm homeopath myself, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very interested in this uh, part. So you, what you are trying to say here is that we can communicate with the plants, and they will guide us on how to use it to get the frequency of it yeah so either so i'm finding more and more that whereas i would you know go to i don't perhaps write the the remedy and the potency and i would charge a glass of water and i would take the remedy if i didn't have the remedy whereas now i just go straight to the plant and then i and i ask the plant the plant what you know i doesn't even need to be a potency the plant just knows and the plant will just bring the medicine that it needs and it might not be or it's not the plant that are the remedy that I thought like I had a dream recently I did a um a dreaming with plants residency for kind of artists and academics and different thinkers and uh we I asked to have a dream with my plant ally for the week and then this is always how like excited and willing they are and I was just like kind of like a bombardment all night of like the plants and they were just sort of coming out of the ether and I remember saying like hang on can we just hold on I'm not gonna remember this and they said it's fine you know remember when you need to remember but it was different um the plants that were coming out some of them I had the sensation that they were the sense they were non-existent or they did become extinct and then plants that hadn't come into existence yet which is in a lot of indigenous mythologies, you see this as these plants that uh, until our consciousness reaches a certain level, they're not going to come, they're not going to be found, they're not going to discover, they're not going to be kind of in this material plane. But a lot of the plants I was shown, I was, they were familiar to me, but the properties weren't. It was the properties I'd never heard of, or never attributed to those plants. So I really have so much sort of trust in the plant over what we think we know about the plants or what we've been, you know, what properties historically and that they are shapeshifters and that they can you can access other plants through a plant you know so sometimes uh it's like a bridge because they're all connected you can go to a particular plant and then you can ask to communicate with a different different group do they like uh, being asked for healing <coughs> do they do they like uh, being asked Healing. Yeah, they're very willing. I can very, yeah, there's a real excitement and willingness, but they just need to be on board with everything. And so even like recording the plants, like it's not, it's not just enough to ask permission. They, I need to explain to them, this is what I'm going to do. This is the, these are the number of people who are going to listen to this. This is, you know, like, so yeah. they're fully aware. Yeah. And that, yeah, and that it's a uh, you know they value the fact that you're asking their opinion as well because often I think they see us as their sort of way with children <laughs> a lot of the time. That's sweet. <laughs> yeah, that's very sweet. So that uh, I mean I, I don't want to be cheeky, but that's why they're quite challenging for vegetarians then. 
I mean, there is that argument, but it's um, the plants have quite a sacrificial energy, um, in the same way that when you go to even picking like picking a bouquet of flowers, which feels yeah. very sort of indulgent, and the plants do kind of go pick me, pick me, pick me, and they get quite jealous as well mm -hmm. of each other if you're just paying more attention to one and not the other. And as long, and I think it's also for them, it's what I've something that came to me more recently in this residency around this topic is that they it's for them it's another it's a way to know more like almost like study human consciousness more so if they're you know taken from one place and they're t given as a gift or taken to somewhere else like it's they're experiencing different energetics and different people so i think the main thing is that they are respected and that they are and the permission is asked so that you know they're happy to to be food provided that we are grateful and we are respectful. I guess it's the intention. Yeah, exactly. It's the intention. If there's love there, then you know, there, there's a sort of... Yeah, so it is kind of sort of sacrificial, I guess, in that, in, in that sense. Mm -hmm. so, something else. Um, in terms of the, a, a deepening of the connection, uh, did you find that after consuming the essences or working with energy that it deepened your connection with your plants? Mm -hmm. or, or just being out in nature with the... Uh, because I've, I've just started to say tansy, mm. uh, because I forever progressing. Um, and it's my second day, and uh, it's interesting because it's considered a weed, uh, and it's considered poisonous as well, but as an essence it can really help to focus the mind. Um, but was that the start of like a, a deepening of the connection when you started to take essences or, or actually work energetically and it kind of strengthened over time? Yeah, well because really you're, when you're doing that you're, you're listening. You know, so they the plant goes, oh great, got their attention. You know, and then then they all, then they sort of all come in. And you can keep the envelope. Oh, can we? Yeah, keep it with you, and then you know, like as you go, even it. like the next couple of days, like just have it as your ally. Oh, thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you.